Again, this is D.A. Spencer, Dr. David A. Spencer. Glad to see you. I hope things are going well with you and your family and your relationships. Uh, you know, the program is Let's Talk About It, so that's what I like to do. And today, uh, I really felt in my heart to talk to you about divorce prevention. Uh, sad to say that the majority of couples in America, in church and out of church, Half is uh, divorce. It's the, the statistics are really uh, outstanding. And uh, I don't really have them in front of me right now, but I've done the research, and it's phenomenal. And it's sad uh, because I believe that no one gets uh, married to get divorced. When you get married, you know, you, you meet someone and you start to click. There's things that you begin to uh, learn about each other that you really enjoy, your personality, your uh, hobbies, things that you like reading, movies, or going to church, things like that. Yeah. And uh, and then you develop this almost like a, a, a soul tie just about. You just really enjoy the company of the person, and, and it's all good. And it grows. It grows deeper and deeper, and next thing you know, you may get married. Uh, I'm going to show you a clip uh, also here about... Uh, especially for you singles people, about what I call application for a marriage. But we'll get that in. Just stay tuned for that. Uh, and again, you, you get to the point where you decide, you know, let's get married. And no one gets married with divorce in mind. You get married hoping and believing that it's going to last, that things are going to get better. And they can. I believe in marriage. And I believe that it works. I'm a pastor. I believe biblically it'll work if you work it. I believe if it's done according to the kingdom order, it'll work. If, uh, if the, both parties do what uh, is, is, is lined out according to God's word for marriage, it's going to work. But it takes work. And again, there's order in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, many of you maybe didn't see a, a good relationship with your parents or other friends and things happened throughout your life that threw you off and past relationships and experiences can all get in the way. But I really believe that uh, it, it can work. I've seen it. And unfortunately, you know, for me, I've been through it. I've been through it. And uh, But I've seen my parents, their marriage, that generation just seemed to make it. And my grandparents, 58, 60 years, you know, probably your grandparents too. Our parents in the 60s, and you know, it was a little rough. You know, started tilting around the 60s, uh, things started falling apart because, again, everything was free love, free sex, free this, free that, do your own thing, drugs, uh, sex, drugs, rock and roll. You know how it was if you were born in that. And if you all that have come after that, forgive us from that generation because we made a mess. That's all I can say. We made a mess. When I speak in public schools or even in juvenile detention centers, I really apologize for my generation because... We did you wrong, and uh, we're reaping what we've sown. We have children that we're not in touch with, and, you know, so many relationships that have been uh, dissolved. Uh, it's, it's, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. But anyhow, that can be redeemed. And the thing that I think hurt the most, uh, other than the way the chi it affects the children, is that you lose a good friend. You lose someone, again, who you had wonderful times with, enjoyed each other's company, and laughed and cried together, whatever it might have been. But when the bitterness and the clashing comes in and it gets nasty and ugly and ends up in divorce or separation or whatever, the sad part is you lose this friend that you had so much fun with. And sometimes you can redeem it. Sometimes, you know, you can maintain the friendship. But it, it really takes a lot of healing. So I wanted to talk to you about divorce and divorce prevention. This is something I like to speak on, too, in uh, conferences and things of this nature. But uh, what is the main cause of divorce? And number one, really, as a believer in a pastor, it's not living up to the kingdom mandate. And it's not easy. It's not easy. But at least you have something to stand on. You have a, a blueprint when you get it married according to the word of God. Uh, again, it's not easy, believe me. I know I failed at it, so I know. I'm speaking to you from experience, from my heart. 
And I believe in marriage, believe me. Okay? So what is the main cause of divorce? From my research, it's, it's not adultery. Many of you would think it's adultery. No, it's really a lack of open and honest communication because that's where it all starts. If you're not communicating with one another, if you don't feel comfortable enough to share uh, your deepest uh, secrets and open up and be transparent with that other person, it's not going to work. Remember last week we talked about relationships and uh, uh, the three types of people you might meet, the comrades you will meet, the comrades, the constituents, and the confidants, three people that are coming to your life. And again, we talk about having the right one in the right place. You know, you, you don't release your deepest feelings and emotions to someone who's a comrade or a constituent because they're going to be there, but they're going to leave eventually. And uh, a confidant is someone who loves you with an agape love. It's called agape, unconditional love. Those are the ones that you can pour your life into. And we all need to pour into someone and someone to pour into us. We need that. So... You know, I believe that if we're careful about uh, where we place people in our lives, we'll have a better chance of having successful relationships and marriages. Um, I have something I'm going to read to you, too. Again, I call it the uh, application for marriage <laughs> or even application for relationships. But we'll get to some of that later because it's, it's not doom and gloom. You know, I, I feel that if you learn from it and you grow from it, you win. Okay, now if you just mope and have a pity party and, and uh, depressed and oppressed and complaining and grumbling, well, then you lose. Then you lose. But if you can say, you know something, I've learned something about me. I've learned something about women. I've learned something about men. I've learned something about people and, and deeper relationships. And I've grown from this. And I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to be unforgiving. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to forgive myself. And I'm going to forgive the people that have been involved because they're people. And people are people. Okay, so uh, let's let's go ahead and get into a little more. So the lack of open and honest communication is responsible for the breakdown of most marriages that end in divorce. Okay, because again, if you're not communicating and you're not open and talking about everything, everything from finances to sex, everything, then you know snakes can get in there, and and next thing you know, because you're not communicating, someone else is communicating. Whether you be the male or the female, someone else p picks up on that. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of people out there just waiting to, to, to uh, manipulate somebody who's down and out. So you got to be careful about who you open up to again and who you discuss um, your marital situation or re your relationships with. Okay? So, again, the lack of communication is the main cause of divorce. We've got to talk. We've got to develop that relationship. So... Why do people divorce? Hope you got your pen and paper. This is going to be another series. And I don't know how many uh, programs it'll be, but this is number one. Why do people divorce? Here's the 10 most common reasons people get divorced. Number one, ready to write it down? People are in it for the wrong reasons. You're in it for the wrong reasons. Your motive isn't pure. It isn't love. It's probably selfish. It's what can I get from that person? Uh, uh, what do they have that I need? What can they do for me? Uh, I want this and, and I don't plan on staying around. Right from the beginning, you already have a negative and you're, you're in it for the wrong reason. You're not in it to be a giver. You're in it to take. You're selfish and that's wrong. That'll destroy a relationship quickly. And the other person might be really in love with you and really most likely is in order for you to manipulate them. They're going to have to be uh, believing you, but they won't be able to pick up on it right away. But eventually it'll come to the surface. You cannot develop a relationship for the wrong reason. It hurts people. And you got to remember, especially you brothers, you know, that's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's daughter. Okay. You might have kids yourself. Would you like somebody to do that to your daughter? No, of course, I don't care how much of a bad boy you are or whatever. We don't want that for our kids, amen? And even with little, with little boys or with young men, you know, let me tell you, there's manipulating women out there too that'll play on somebody to get what they want. It's just the truth, right? If somebody out there say, amen, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Nope, there's no perfect people. So you want to make sure that you're in it for the right reason. You're, you're in it because you care, 
uh, you care about one another, that you will do for each other, that you will watch each other's back. You know, in the street, they call it ride and die, <laughs> that you just be there for that person when they call in the middle of the night. You, you, you be like almost a sponsor in AA. When they call you, you're there. You're, you're there to help. You're there to pick up. You're there to encourage. You're there to contribute, whether it is financially or mentally, emotionally, or if you even just have to take that person for a long ride and not say anything. You're there for the person. And believe me, those things go a long way. But again, it has to be the right reason. The wrong reasons will be exposed eventually. Okay, that's number one. Uh, number two is this. Lack of individual identity. You lose your identity. And, and here's what happens. Sometimes you get so involved with pleasing that you forget who you are. And that's, that shouldn't be. Yes, it's to becoming one or to become one. Well, you know, it takes a while to become one. And so, you know, as you're developing the relationship together, you have to also maintain your identity. Uh, when I do marriages, we always have the lighting of the candles, if the couple wants it. There's usually a candle on each side and a big candle in the middle. And each candle on each side is lit, and that's the individual man or woman. And and then uh, they they light the candle in the middle to put their flames together, but then they, they put their other candles back. And, and uh, that, 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 that still corresponds to your individuality, even though you've decided to become one in that middle flame, and the candle basically represents God. Okay, So you become one in him in your marriage, in your marriage vows, but you are still there. And so you don't want to lose your identity in the relationship. You don't want to be dominated. You don't want to dominate. You have to know who you are. And again, if you're communicating with the other person, they're going to know who you are. You, you shouldn't have to hide. You shouldn't have to be afraid to open up to someone else. Or else you're going to wear a mask. And then your, your real identity is not going to be uh, visible. It'll be a big game. And then you have to hide things. And you, you, know, you have to watch what you say. And, and you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you know who you are and be above board. Don't, don't try to hide. Don't try to hide it. You just speak, if you, whatever it might be. If you have a, a gay tendencies or whatever, be up front with the person that you're with so that they can also make a choice of what they want to do. And don't squelch who you are or who you, who you are, okay? Uh, again, so the lack of identity in a relationship can, uh, can bring it down, can bring it down because there's one thing I hate. And that is deception. You know, I, I would say, love me or leave me. Please don't deceive me. Just be honest. You know, when you're honest with people, they can get over it. You know, it might take some time, and, but they'll get over it. But when you deceive someone, and there's a thread that goes on and on, and the person doesn't know how long, and this and that, and it, it hurts deep, it cuts deep, then that's hard to come back from. And, and it, you lose your identity in the person, mostly women, because you want to please. You are made to please. That's what you do. You are help me. And so you sacrifice a lot of you to help that man become who he is called to be. And in, the, in, the, in, in that uh, journey, you can lose yourself. You know, like a lot of uh, women, they get married and then the husband goes to law school and, and you go to work and you're bringing up the kids and all that. And then 20 years down the road, the husband says, I don't want to be with you anymore. <laughs> now, all your dreams, they're all gone. They're all dwindled away and you're wondering what happened. Don't lose your identity. Know who you are in the relationship. Pursue your dreams and your goals. Your mate should be helping you to pursue that as much as they can, as much as possible. Remember, it's your dream and your goal. Amen? So, number two, again, is the lack of identity. Number three, why people divorce is becoming lost in the roles. Again, we kind of just touched on that, but... You know, you become lost in the role. It, 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 no woman wants a man who's not a man. And no man wants a woman who, who's not a woman in the feminine and the masculine thing. And so you want to make sure that uh, you know who you are. And, and let me put it this way. Uh, you, you might say, well, I'm this and I'm that. Well, all I know is this. If you got a womb and you can have a baby, you are a womb man. Okay, if you if you don't have a womb that has a baby, you're a man. Okay, so that's my take on it, and 
please keep your responses to yourself because I respect yours, respect mine. But I just want to let you know that you don't want to get lost in the roles because eventually it's going to come up and there's going to be problems there. And, you know, if you don't know who you are and you're not honest about it right from the beginning, you're going to be seeking and searching and other people are going to sense it because uh, like draws like. That's simple as that. People can see things, you know. I know there's many times when... Uh, when, when I'm just walking down the street and people see me and, and you know, these are brothers and they say, listen, man, did, did, uh, did you used to live up in this hotel up the street? And I tell them no because I know they're talking about the prison because they say I look like a, a convict that I have that kind of a face that, you know. But anyway, it's like, no, no, that's, that's not me. Um, I know who I am. You need to know who you are. You need to let the people you are involved with know, especially husbands and wives. You've got to know who you are. You don't want to get lost in the roles. You have to do do what you can. And I'm not saying that it's wrong for a man to do dishes and vacuum and all that. I do all that. It, you know, that's nothing. I want to help out whatever way I can. And the same thing with the mate. You know, she should, you know, be able to bend as much as she can, you know, just like you, without violating your role and who you are as a man or a woman. Amen? Okay. Uh, number four, number four, and again, you all have your own take on this. I'm just bringing some things to your attention because, again, uh, I feel bad uh, when people get divorced and it's, it's just everywhere, but they feel ashamed and they feel guilty and, and just embarrassed. And it's like, you know something? Okay, it happened. Don't just go sit in the corner in a closet in your house somewhere and, and, and lose touch of life. You know, what did you learn? Like I said earlier, what did you learn? Did you grow? Okay, it is what it is. You know, if people want to point fingers, remember, when somebody points one finger at you, there's three pointing back at them. And people want to talk. And most people talk and project things and, and want to because they're covering up their stuff. It's like, look at him. Don't look at my flaws. And everybody has flaws. Okay, so you want to make sure you don't... Uh, become lost in your role. Uh, again, uh, number four would be this, not having a shared vision. Not having a shared vision. So we want to touch on that maybe next week, uh, not having a shared vision. I, I believe my time might be up right about now. So I, I want to catch up with this, but you, you don't think about it. Just think about what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to get this across to you. And, uh, and I believe... It'll help you. It'll help you. We need to talk, right? So let's talk about it. God bless you. I'll talk to you later. Just come to say hello. There are some things I'd like to know. Are you feeling okay or do you have something to say?